Jane Jose, Malcolm BJJ in Chicago. This is our weekly uh, question and answer segment we do. So our tech question we got this week was how to defend in headquarters. So I assume he means what the bottom person can do when they're in headquarters uh, against the top person. So Jose will take it first, and then I'll, I'll come up with something after that. Um, Mr. Down. Cool. So let's just, you know, let's not get with like, into like any sort of entanglements or anything like this. So if someone has me in this position here, right? The, the thing that's preventing a lot of the movement is that this foot is in the middle, right? It's preventing a lot of movement. It's preventing uh, distance management with this leg. So usually as the bottom guy, I always fare up really well if I get his base over me, right? Now it really serve you really well in jiu-jitsu if you can always rock the guy's base over, the, over you. So usually what I do is I, if I can get Jay's head over me, I'll do pretty well. So if I can get this grip, right? What I'm gonna do is using this foot and using this hand, I'm gonna bring the guy over me. What the guy's gonna do is just post just for a quick second, all right? What I want to do is I wanna start going underneath the guy. So I go here, right? Right when that happens, I start going underneath, right? And then I can start playing some guard, some variation, and so forth. Okay. All right, yeah, um, so my answer is gonna be really boring, but very practical. And this, this could answer a lot of questions of what to do in guard. So Jose has got me in headquarters. If I don't like what's happening, I almost always just put in a lasso. And that changes everything. That fixes most of my problems. Even a shallow lasso like this. Then I'm not worried about the knee slice or the knee cut. I might control this leg, start to angle off, see if I can start working from here. Whatever the case, the offense doesn't matter. But when we're stuck in here and my legs are pinned, this arm is right here. Very easy, it changes the whole dynamic. So most of the time, that's what I'll try to do. And then uh, you can sit down over here. Our more conversational question was, um, so I trained for five years under Carlos Gracie Sr. and Jose got his black belt from Emily Kwok. So the question was lessons or technique or anything from those specific instructors. Um, I guess I'll answer first. So I didn't get my black belt from Carlson. I got my black belt from Eduardo de Lima. And most of the technique I learned is probably from Eduardo. Eduardo's a great technical instructor, and it's most of what I pass on. What Carlson was, was one of the few people I've interacted in my life that's truly a larger than life figure. Was um, big, bold, loud, people wanted to be around him. He was very charismatic. He didn't speak very good English, but everybody wanted to come to his class, and not just because he was famous. Um, he had some kind of um, energy that was motivating, inspiring. And I, don't know how to copy it. I'm not the same kind of person he is. Um, but like when you competed under Carlson, you wanted to win for Carlson. And when you wore the like t-shirt, you wanted to wear Carlson's t-shirt for Carlson. And it was very interesting to see. You hear about those those rare entities that are larger than life. And I'm glad I got to experience some time with them. Great. So I got my black belt from Emily Kwok. Um, I believe she's the first Canadian uh, to ever win the World Championships. Um, uh, Emily is like a say like a five foot five, five foot five lady, but she is a tank. Not just like jujitsu wise, but I feel like mentally. Um, I, I came to Emily when I was a purple belt, so I got my brown belt and my black belt from Emily. And one of the biggest takeaways I got from her is that she really didn't care if you went out and competed and lost. What she really did care about though is if you gave up. Um, so let's say like you tried, you tried something, um, but you really didn't fully commit. You kind of like just mentally gave up because you didn't think you're, it was actually going to work out. Like you wouldn't, you would not stop hearing about it from Emily afterwards. Like she was a like kind of person. Like if you did something, you know, win or fail, you had to like go, go all out and really commit to what you were doing. Um, and that really served me a lot. I mean, I, I feel like whenever we compete, you always have like that doubt um, in you, or like whenever you like train here and you're trying to figure out something, you always, you know, just take that risk. If you fail, so be it. If not, then like you learn from it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I took away. Thank you for watching. We're a little bit uh, late this week because Jose was out of town, but we're gonna try to get these out every week or every other week or so.